Tarsian is 22 years old. He never went to school. Riding my bike is all I'm good at. I never did anything else. I don't even want to except if I found less tiring work. I definitely don't want to be carrying anything on top of my head like the women do. It's exhausting to pedal, yes, but carrying things on my head? No way. After 45 minutes, Tarsian reaches his destination, the Banana Beer Brewer's Village. <laughs> Burundi is one of the poorest countries in Africa. Owning a bike is worth a great deal here. But Tarsian must already support a wife and two kids in his early 20s. <laughs> How can I save money with a job like this? It's just about enough to sustain my family and myself, nothing more. Look, I can't even afford new trousers. I am no dreamer. This job holds no future whatsoever. Panfil has been brewing banana beer, Umbubira, on the farm next to his house and is in for 15 years now. He lets the bananas ripen in a pit for another week. The farmer can only process the bananas if they have developed enough sweetness. Otherwise, the fermentation process might not take place properly. Bananas with a thick skin are especially well suited for producing banana beer. <laughs> His own family and a few workers from the village assist Pamphil with the production. <laughs> The workers use fresh, cleaned hay to help them squeeze out the liquid. The hay also creates Pamphil's banana beer's special flavor. My life as a beer brewer is a good one, really. I make good money and I'm able to pay the workers' wages. I will never be rich, of course. I mean, we can't afford to buy new shoes and things like that. But I don't have to go around stealing things. The family has enough to eat and we can send the kids to school. Nobody tells me what to do and I don't need to go chasing after my money. I am my own master. <laughs> It's still only banana juice. <laughs> Since the main market in the city center burnt down in 2013, the number of traders and customers at the Sioni market has doubled. One of the reasons being the government banning the street trade. Everyone had to turn to the remaining markets. Alice Sindaye is 42 years old. She has been working as a market woman for 10 years now. When the main market burnt down, she not only lost both of her stands, but all her goods went up in flames too. She had to start again from scratch.
I have four kids and no husband. When the market burnt down and the hard times began, he just ran off. He never gave me any money to feed the kids and myself. I had to take out a credit loan. That helped us along, and I was able to build up a new stand here. Eric delivers bananas to Alice as well. Today he is running late due to the rain. Normally he would get 15,000 Burundian francs for a cluster of bananas. Would you lower the price a bit? I can only pay 10,000. Today, Alice pays Eric five euros per cluster, which makes one euro an hour for Eric to keep. With the thousands of cyclists in Burundi, there is always something to repair or to patch. You'll find bicycle repair shops everywhere in Burundi, especially near the markets, where most cyclists deliver their goods. Alexandre Tassis has been the boss here for five years. Most bicycles in his shop come from China and break down easily. These bikes are basically like all the others. We have to reinforce the carrier with iron bars. Good tires are important, though. Bike courier Eric also comes here if he has enough money to afford new tires. The work is being done fast here, and he gets some good advice as well. Almost a hundred mechanics work for Alexandre. Some customers live nearby, but most of them come from far away. For example, from Gatumba or Bugurama. Some are foreigners coming from the Congo to have their bikes repaired here. They trust me. Eric appears unruffled by the fact that he has to spend a portion of his narrow income in order to keep his bike in good shape. It's very important to change tires. They were totally worn out. If there's rain like today, you can easily slip and fall. The tires burst more easily too, especially when you brake. I already patched the tube four times. It's just too dangerous. Eric cycles back to Bugorama on new tires. The Burundi racing cyclists have divided up the district. There are those who cycle in from the north and go back in the evening. The others serve the southern route. The Burundi Highway runs along the banks of Lake Tanganyika for 200 kilometers heading south, right up to the Tanzanian border. Faustin Dabazanya's palm grove is situated directly on the main road. Together with his son Patrick, he looks for ripe fruits, which he can later process in his palm oil factory, which is 10 kilometers away. Patrick is a gifted climber. Now to the Kiaga. Even though we are next to the lake, the soil is dry and sandy, which is not good for the palms. They don't grow properly and bear little fruit. But we are lucky. Our soil contains many nutrients, in spite of the nearby lake. That's why our palms are so tall and strong and the oil tastes well, too. Only when the fruits have taken on an orange-red color are they ripe for harvesting and are easy to pick.
Patrick transports the crop from his father's palm oil grove to the oil factory himself. They have to be kept there for a few days before they can be processed to oil. Patrick much prefers climbing up the trees to carrying the heavy load on his bike. I still go to school and I only do this in my spare time to earn some money. Later I want to take on a proper job, but right now I do both, work as a bike courier and study. Lake Tanganyika is the second largest lake in Africa. It shapes the landscape in southern Burundi. The riverbank is lined with little fishing villages along the road. Niyongabo slowly comes to life. At 6 a.m., the men return from fishing. They spent the whole night out on the lake. Today, they didn't catch much. The waves were too high. For a few years now, they are only allowed to fish every second week in order to protect the fish stock. Cesar Salvatore has been a fisherman for eight years now. I believe the fishing restrictions are a good thing. It gives us fishermen a rest, and we get to spend more time with our families. And the fish can breed in those seven days. That's a good thing. After school, Patrick earns some extra money working as a bicycle courier. He doesn't have to sustain a family, so he feels less pressure. The bike courier has arrived at Faustin's palm oil factory. The production is in full process. The ripe fruits are loosened from the bunches and are cleaned, first of all. The oil manufacturer has meanwhile gotten used to the traffic in the Adu on the adjacent road. Faustin has been in the palm oil business for three years now. The oil palm means a lot to us. It always gives us oil, which we can use for cooking. We use the palm fronds as broomsticks. The remaining pips we use to make soap or shampoo. The fibers, also a byproduct, help to light a fire. And oil palm provides everything we humans need. About 20 palm oil farmers have joined in a cooperative and operate the old squeezing machine together. Everyone can process his own fruit there. Faustin is checking the production flow. The water cools the machine so the oil doesn't go rancid. Twenty families make their living from this. Their existence, as well as the economy of the whole country, depends on the timely deliverance of fresh supplies. Mm -hmm.